Hello, the title of this presentation is Poverty and Political Style, the Case of Barack Obama and the L plus H star of Hitch Accent. Um, I'm Nicole Holliday, I'm from Pomona College. Uh, this is a collaborative work with Jason Bishop of uh, the City University of New York and Grace Guo from National Taiwan University. So first, a little bit of background about Obama and his role in the linguistic research that we have done so far. Um, Obama is a unique linguistic subject because of his position, his sociolinguistic background, and the public's reaction to him. Um, we know this, uh, Aleem and Smitherman have a 2012 book called Articulate While Black, and they discuss the ways in which Obama uses interlocutor conditioned variation on a number of linguistic levels to construct a persona that appeals to both black and white audiences. Um, in my earlier work, um, Holiday 2018, I examined the way that Barack Obama, in contrast to his wife Michelle, employs coronal stop deletion in a way that makes him look like a second dialect speaker of African American language. Uh, also, in a recent work with Dan Villarreal, now of the University of Pittsburgh, uh, we looked at the ways in which speakers will judge Obama as sounding blacker when uh, we had phonetic manipulations that had more extreme F0 contrasts as well as some voice quality features. Um, so the research questions for the paper that we are presenting today is Obama's use of specific boundary tones and pitch accent types conditioned by his effective stance at the particular moment of an utterance? Um, are the phonetic properties of Obama's intonational patterns also subject to patterning by affect? Uh, and we're going to build on uh, some of the earlier work to address these primary research questions. So uh, back to the aforementioned work by Aleem and Smitherman. Uh, they inspired a line of research into how former President Obama in particular appeals to different audiences. And they were specifically interested in how he utilizes his linguistic performance, as well as indexical links to white and black identity. So the ways in which the linguistic features that he employs have these indexical links to different types of identity. Um, they argue that Obama is especially of interest because of what he represents as a black speaker, but also because of his unusual sociolinguistic background and his masterful use of style shifting between what we'll call mainstream US English, what some people call a standard, and African American language. Uh, a little bit of background on linguistics and political style. Uh, so there is uh, a formative work by Hall Lu et al. Um, showing that vowel choice and quality in loan words can be used to align oneself with a particular political party. So if you're familiar with this, is, this work, it's the famous Iraq, Iraq vowels uh, paper that showed that uh, political parties in the United States uh, aligned themselves with one pronunciation or the other uh, sort of along their stances towards uh, the issues between uh, the war between the United States and Iraq. Um, in an earlier work that I did with Zach Jaggers, we examined the ways um, in which listeners were adept at rating the ethnicity of some politicians based on one word samples. And um, we also found that a number of voice quality features appear to influence listener judgment. Uh, so we, we played uh, samples from a number of different politicians and had people evaluate their race and found that voice quality uh, features are important in the way that people seem to make these judgments about politicians' race uh, in that experiment. There's also the earlier work of Mendoza Denton and Janity, um, which shows that in a particular context, speaker gesture and intonational consort uh, can indicate stance and affect, so sort of their orientation towards a situation and or particular utterance, uh, specifically for the function of calling on a person in a town hall type of meeting or expressing incredulity. So we know that there are linguistic features sort of involved in doing these different political uh, stances. A little bit on Obama and his linguistic style, what we know already. So um, I like to call him Obama the style shifter because of his uh, linguistic flexibility. Um, we know that racial identity matters for Obama and likely influences his linguistic style. Um, this is pretty evident from the way that he himself talks about race, but also uh, the way that he was sort of characterized in the larger uh, American public imagination when he was the president. Um, in my earlier work, I examined people who had uh, more similar racial backgrounds to Obama, although without the political piece. Um, I looked at 25 uh, men in the Washington, D.C. area. They were aged 18 to 32. Um, each of them had one black parent and one white parent. And relevant to the current study, um, 
the participants were recorded in casual peer dyad conversations with friends and the analysis of their intonational patterns was taken from these recordings. Um, I found a pattern such that the participants who identified more as black as opposed to multiracial or mixed were then more likely to use a greater quantity of L plus H star pitch accents than H star pitch accents. So this is sort of some evidence that maybe this pitch accent in particular is useful in uh, racial identity construction. Um, and if this holds for Obama, he may be especially likely to shift his intonational patterns as a result of his own identity performance in a given moment, um, as well as his evaluation of the context or topic. Uh, here conceptualizes affect, and this is building on that earlier work of Mendoza, Denton, and Janity. Um, so we have to talk about what we mean by affect, since that's one of the main variables that we're interested in in this study. Um, linguists have long been interested in pattern variation conditioned by speakers' feelings about what they're saying, so their orientation towards what they are expressing in a moment. Um, and here we're defining affect um, as the kind of emotion about some referent or proposition following the earlier works of Oakes and Scheiflin and Oakes um, in the early 90s. Um, Oakes, in particular, posits relevant universals in affect and stance marking, including paralinguistic features like vowel lengthening, intensity, and speech rate. So while she isn't exactly specific about what intonational features uh, might be used to express a particular affect, uh, there is some hint that there's something like this going on because of the other co-patterning variables that she examined. Um, all of this about affect is related to stance, if you're familiar with those, um, although it differs in that it's about the proposition itself and not necessarily about how the speaker is constructing themselves in a socialized, recognized way in a particular moment. So we kind of have to consider affect and stance together, but when we're looking at particular utterances, affect is the more relevant unit of analysis. Um, so here are some examples from the data that we examined in the current study. Um, this one on the left we see has an H star pitch accent followed by a downstep H star and an LL boundary tone. Um, this is an example of positive affect and you'll see, uh, you should be able to hear what he says. I agree with these business owners. I agree with these business owners. One more time. I agree with these business owners. Okay, so this is positive affect, right? He agrees. Uh, in the contrast on the right, we have a uh, negative affect. Um, he is saying that there is an issue, right? Uh, and sort of calling out this issue. Here we see an L plus H star pitch accent followed by an H star um, and an LL boundary tone. There was some controversy about this boundary tone, um, which we can talk about a little bit later on if we want, but um, you can listen to what these pitch accents sound like at least. But feel like they can't get ahead. That's that dramatic um, sort of fall, rise, fall in the L plus H star one more time. But feel like they can't get ahead. Okay, so those are the two uh, types of affect that we're looking at and the two types of pitch accents that will become uh, important for the comparison for the current paper. Um, before we get to that though, a little bit of background on variation and intonation. Uh, we know that variation uh, is dramatically understudied at this level, and indeed it's even less studied in varieties of American English than other Englishes. Um, in an earlier study uh, with Rachel Burdine of the University of New Hampshire and Paul Reed of the University of Alabama, uh, we found that not only the quantity of each pitch accent type, but also the phonetic realization of it seems to differentiate a number of varieties, including African American language, Jewish English, and Appalachian English. So in particular, um, pitch accents might be a productive site when examining variation. However, there is an issue in that current popular methods may not be well suited for studying variation as they were all primarily designed for mainstream US English. So um, particularly because we're using um, the auto-segmental metrical phonology theory and uh, the Toby conventions that uh, follow, uh, they might not be exactly appropriate for variation if it exists at the phonetic level because these systems are uh, phonetically underspecified. Um, so this is one issue just in the nature of studying intonational variation. Um, a little bit about the L plus H star pitch accent, that's sort of the showcase variable that we're interested in, what we know um, about this in ethnolinguistic variation. So in the earlier work that I mentioned, um, we found again that speakers self-identify, uh, speakers who self-identify as more black have a greater rate of use of L plus H star as opposed to H star, and this is independent of interlocutor race effects. 
Um, in that earlier study with uh, Rachel Bergeen and, uh, and Paul Reed, we also found L plus H star was more likely in Jewish English and Appalachian English than AAL, um, but other studies have found more um, L plus H star in AAL than in mainstream English. So there might be sort of this ranking continuum of um, probability of using that pitch accent in different varieties. Um, also in a 2018 paper, Jason McLarty of Emory University um, found that AAL speakers do use more L plus H star uh, than H star in, than comparable white speakers in North Carolina. Um, so there does seem to be sort of a growing body of evidence that L plus H star in particular is interesting uh, when we're looking at variation. Um, one thing on intonation and indexical meaning, so we know that this pitch accent is uh, maybe productive in variation, but what does it mean? Um, in English, very little has been done on this in the AM framework, but theoretically it's, it's probably crucial to see uh, sort of what it means for listeners. Um, we know that this variation may underlie how people make judgments about a speaker's emotional state, so it's got this um, paralinguistic meaning, but also how they interpret linguistic meaning, so things like focus, whether something is new information, whether something is a question or declarative, um, et cetera, all influenced by a uh, speaker's interpretation of what intonation means. Um, June and Foreman, um, and Foreman and my earlier work, uh, found that AAL speakers do use different boundaries than expected for mainstream speakers. So that's going to be a point of interest in the current study, um, if there's sort of variation in the use of boundary tones. Um, and we also know that perception of meaning of a contour is related to indexical field, and it has the potential to vary by listener and community. So what a uh, particular pitch accent or contour combination of pitch accents and boundaries means uh, might be different depending on uh, the variety expected by the interlocutors and their linguistic familiarity. So this all sets up a really interesting question for what's going on with Obama, a person that has these sort of competing um, identity uh, pressures going on, as well as having to do a political performance and express his attitude, his stance, or his affect towards particular propositions. For the current study, in order to collect the data, um, we looked at four speeches from Obama's Your Weekly Address. Um, these were speeches done in 2013 and 14. Um, this is uh, from another paper. Um, each speech was approximately 2.5 minutes long, um, and they were annotated in Pratt using the MAE Toby conventions. Um, there were two coders for each of these speeches. Um, Interrater reliability was 92% on the presence of a pitch accent and 79% on the pitch accent type, which if you know anything about L plus H star is actually pretty high. That is one of the uh, pitch accents that tends to generate uh, lower rates of agreement. So 79% is very good. Um, the corpus was subsequently annotated uh, by myself uh, for affect here defined as the kind of emotion about some referent or proposition, again, following Oak. Um, and the phrases were categorized as having positive, negative, or neutral affect. So this is a three-way category with the goal of identifying the extent to which effective meaning categories related to phonological choices and phonetic realization um, in Obama's prosody in these speeches. Uh, for our analysis methods, uh, we use logistic and linear mixed effects regression models that were implemented in R um, using the LME4 package. And we ran models for pitch accent type by affect. So here comparing um, H star versus L plus H star. Um, we also looked at slope for L plus H star pitch accents by affect and boundary type by affect, but you will see that boundary type doesn't seem to be influenced by affect. Um, we also looked for the F0 peak in PA by affect, which was not significant. Um, so here's just those results for boundary tone. You'll see that uh, for uh, the HL uh, boundary, uh, there is, it does appear that they're slightly more likely to occur uh, with positive affect phrases, um, but this difference is not statistically significant. Um, the difference between the LH boundaries um, is not significant, and the difference between the LL boundaries is not significant um, for these affect, um, but we did test for it. However, more interestingly, we do see a significant result for pitch accent by affect. So um, the largest difference here, and this should be immediate, you see um, more negative affect uh, in, uh, for the phrases that have L plus H star pitch accents um, than those that have other types of pitch accents. Um, and this difference is st statistically significant in a linear uh, mixed effects regression model at um, less than P uh, is equals 0.01. Now for the results for affect and slope, uh, we do see a difference for 
affect where the negative affect uh, phrases with the L plus H star pitch accents have a, uh, a longer slope um, than the positive affect ones. So we see this phonetic difference. Um, negative affect was found to be a predictor of Obama's use of the L plus H star accent as well as its phonetic characteristics. So the uh, length uh, and the height of the F0 rise over uh, the length of the IP itself. Um, these findings differ somewhat from those reported in previous studies of both black and white speakers in similarly formal contexts. And uh, there are implications for our understanding of how variety specific intonational features may be involved in the construction of sociopolitical meaning. So for, uh, to sum up, in these formal addresses to the nation during his presidency, Obama uses more L plus H star pitch accents with negative affect phrases than positive affect phrases. Um, the L plus H star pitch accents have a more dramatic slope when Obama employs negative affect, but this doesn't really appear to be driven by F0 peak because that difference was not significant. So it's not just about the height um, of the maximum F0. This seems to indicate that the use of this particular pitch accent in this context may also carry negative indexical meaning that speakers may exploit for both political and ethno-linguistic purposes. Um, this has some broader impacts for future work. So we see a possible interaction between ethno-linguistic variation and variation conditioned by affect, stance, and other performative orientations. Um, we know that speakers and listeners may differentially employ intonational contours in manners that are conditioned not only by dialect background, but also by their orientation toward the particular topic or even interlocutor. And we know that future research should also examine audience response to the use of different intonational contours in political contexts. Uh, we would like to acknowledge both Rachel Verdeen and Paul Reed for their assistance on this work, um, as well as the uh, organizers of Speech Prosody and the anonymous reviewers for their helpful comments. Uh, this is how you get in touch with us. Thank you so much.